DNA never lies, but it can hide secrets for thousands of years. Beneath the skin, beyond borders and last names, the human body holds a record older than any kingdom. In the Philippines, scientists are now uncovering genetic traces that date back over 50,000 years, linking today's people not just to early Asian migrants, but to extinct human relatives, ancient seafaring explorers, and even Native American civilizations. Modern studies reveal a surprising mix of Denisovan DNA, Austronesian sailing routes, Chinese and Indian bloodlines, and Spanish and Mexican imprints from centuries of colonization and trade. So, how did one of the world's most diverse genetic stories come together on a scattered group of islands in the Pacific. You might think Filipino history starts with the arrival of the Spanish in the 1500s, but the truth? It starts way, way before that. The first people to set foot on the land we now call the Philippines arrived around 50,000 years ago. That's before the pyramids, before farming, before writing. These early people walked out of Africa, crossed rivers and land bridges, and ended up in these islands. They were small, dark-skinned, strong, and full of survival skills. Scientists called them Australo-Melanesians, and in the Philippines, they became known as the Negritos. Today, the Eta, Acta, and Atai are some of the direct descendants of these first Filipinos. Their genes are some of the oldest human DNA still found on Earth. And yes, some of that DNA lives in you. But this is only the beginning of the story. Around 4,000 years ago, another group of people started arriving. These people didn't walk, they sailed. And they weren't just travelers, they were builders, farmers, traders, and storytellers. They came from Taiwan and southern China, and scientists called them the Austronesians. These Austronesians were incredible. They knew how to build boats that could cross oceans. They brought with them new crops like rice, new tools, and a new way of life. They didn't wipe out the Negritos. They didn't replace them. Instead, they mixed with them. They married them. They became part of the same story. Over time, this mix created the foundation of the modern Filipino identity. You can still feel it today. The way people speak, the food they eat, even the shape of their faces. All of it comes from that blend. Most Filipinos today carry DNA from both the Negrito and Austronesian ancestors. That mix is what makes you, you. But hold on, the story isn't over yet. These islands didn't just sit here alone and forgotten. They became part of something big, something global. Over the next thousand years, wave after wave of people came to the Philippines, and every time, they left something behind. Let's start with the Malay people from present-day Malaysia, Indonesia, and Brunei. They came in trading boats, bringing with them languages, goods, and genes. Some married into local communities, others stayed for generations. Their influence spread across Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao. Then came people from the Indochina region, modern-day Vietnam, Cambodia, and Thailand. They brought their own culture and genes, adding more layers to the growing Filipino identity. Over time, this genetic mix kept getting richer. The Philippines became like a giant pot where different people, cultures, and bloodlines blended together. One of the biggest surprises scientists found came from India. Yes, India. Long before Spain arrived, Indian merchants and priests traveled across Southeast Asia. They traded goods. They spread new religions like Hinduism and Buddhism. They even helped build ancient kingdoms like Rajanate of Butuan, Sri Vahaya, and Maja As. Some of these Indians settled in the Philippines. They married locals, and their DNA became part of the Filipino genetic code, especially in Mindanao and the Visayas. Their influence also shows up in local traditions, words, and ancient royal customs. You probably didn't learn that in school, but it's real. It's written in your genes. Next comes another powerful group, the Chinese. Chinese trade with the Philippines began over 1,000 years ago, but it didn't stop at goods. Chinese settlers arrived from southern China, especially Fujian. They built communities in places like Manila, Cebu, and Iloilo. They brought silk, ceramics, and spices, but they also married into Filipino families. Today, scientists see clear Chinese DNA in many Filipinos. If your family comes from a city or coastal town, there's a good chance you carry some of this genetic link. Now let's talk about the big one, the one that most people think about first, Spain. In 1521, the Spanish arrived. For the next over 300 years, they ruled the islands. They changed everything, religion, government, food, even names. And yes, they also changed the DNA. 
But here's the twist. Scientists found that Spanish blood doesn't show up in everyone. It's mostly seen in Luzon and parts of the Visayas, especially in cities like Manila, Vigan, and Cebu. That's because the Spanish mostly settled in major centers, and the settlers were often soldiers, priests, and officials. They married local women. Their children became part of a new social class, one with European names, Catholic faith, and a mix of European and Austronesian genes. But here's something even more surprising. Not all European DNA in Filipinos is pure Spanish. You see, Spain ruled the Philippines through its colony in Mexico. That means many of the people who came weren't Spanish at all. They were Mexican, Peruvian, and indigenous Latin Americans. Ships traveled back and forth between Manila and Acapulco for over 250 years, carrying soldiers, settlers, and slaves. Some Filipinos today carry DNA markers linked to Aztec, Mayan, and other Native American groups. That's not a theory, that's a genetic fact. The Spanish also brought a caste system. It sorted people based on race, Spanish at the top, mixed race in the middle, and native Filipinos at the bottom. But even this system couldn't stop the blending. People married across caste lines, cultures mixed, and the gene pool kept growing more diverse. Now let's pause for a second and look at something most people never expect. So far, we've seen how human DNA in the Philippines carried the fingerprints of travelers, traders, and empires, people from Taiwan, India, China, Spain, and Mexico. But there's another part of the human story that barely anyone talks about, and it doesn't come from a kingdom or a boat or a city. It comes from a whole different kind of human, a kind that no longer exists, a group that disappeared long ago, but still lives on in the blood of the people walking this earth today. They're called the Denisovans. Denisovans were a species of ancient humans, like Homo sapiens, but different. They weren't cavemen, they weren't apes. They were human relatives, like cousins. They lived tens of thousands of years ago in parts of Siberia, Southeast Asia, and Oceania. They walked on two legs, used tools, and lived in caves. And then, they vanished. But not completely. Scientists today use advanced tools to study ancient bones. In 2010, they made a shocking discovery inside a cave in Siberia. They found a finger bone and a tooth. When they studied the DNA, they realized it didn't belong to Neanderthals or modern humans. It was something new, something in between. That was the Denisovan. Now, here's where it gets even more surprising. As researchers studied modern human DNA, they found traces of Denisovan genes in present-day people. Not in everyone, but in specific places. People from Melanesia, Papua New Guinea, Australia, and some parts of Southeast Asia all still carry Denisovan DNA. That means long ago, Homo sapiens didn't just pass by the Denisovans. They met them, they lived with them, and yes, they had children with them. Now let's bring that back to our story. Some of the groups in the Philippines today, especially the indigenous forest-dwelling communities, like the Aita, Acta, and Atai, still carry small amounts of Denisovan DNA. That's not folklore, that's real science, confirmed by genome studies. It shows that before the Austronesians sailed in, before Spanish ships landed, there were already people living on the islands whose genes were shaped by one of the oldest human species ever found. Think about that. Some of the DNA we see today doesn't even come from Homo sapiens alone. It comes from a lost branch of the human family tree. That kind of discovery doesn't just tell us about ancient humans, it also shows how wide and deep the human journey really is. It's not a simple story of one group replacing another, it's a web of survival, connection, and mixing. So old that it reaches back into the very roots of our species. But that's only one part of the bigger picture. The Philippines and the wider Southeast Asian region isn't just a place where old DNA hides, it's also been one of the most active crossroads in human history, a meeting point for cultures, travelers, and empires. Let's fast forward to the 1500s through the 1800s. During this time, the Manila Galleon trade connected Asia, the Americas, and Europe in ways that no other route had before. From Manila to Acapulco, Mexico, ships crossed the Pacific carrying silk, spices, porcelain, and silver. But they also carried people, soldiers, workers, slaves, and families. This wasn't just about trade, it was about movement, a global exchange of cultures, languages, and genes. And yes, people had families across those oceans. Some stayed, some moved on. 
but every one of them left behind stories in the DNA of future generations. And then came another major chapter, the Americans. In 1898, after defeating Spain in war, the United States took control of the Philippines. This marked the start of a new wave of change. Thousands of American military personnel, teachers, missionaries, and workers began to live and work across the islands. Many of them stayed for years. Some had children with local women. Others became part of the communities they served. Today, there are Filipino families with American ancestry, not just European American. Some lineages trace back to African American soldiers who were stationed across Asia during the early 1900s and again during World War II. These soldiers, who came from Buffalo Soldier Regiments, Navy ships, or support units, lived in bases near Subic Bay, Clark Air Base, and cities across the region. They contributed to the development of towns, schools, and industries. And they also formed relationships. Some of those relationships turned into families. Their children became a new layer in the ever-growing genetic story. It's not always a happy tale. War and conflict sometimes brought forced relationships. But whatever the history, the genetic record shows that the American era brought a new level of diversity, a kind that added African and Western European traits to the already rich Southeast Asian and Austronesian gene pool. And then came World War II. In 1941, the Japanese military invaded. The islands became battlegrounds. Cities were destroyed. People were displaced. During the Japanese occupation, thousands died. But history didn't freeze, life still went on, and once again, the genes kept mixing. Some Japanese soldiers and civilians formed bonds with local women, sometimes by choice, other times through violence or power. Today, small amounts of Japanese DNA appear in certain Filipino populations, especially in coastal or urban regions where occupation forces were stationed. The end of the war in 1945 brought independence in 1946, but the mixing didn't stop. If anything, it got faster. Post-war migration saw Filipinos and Southeast Asians moving around the globe to America, Canada, Australia, and the Middle East. At the same time, people from Europe, Korea, China, and the United States moved into Southeast Asia for business, work, and marriage. These modern connections added yet another layer to the human story. And today, science is finally catching up to this long, complicated past. If that just blew your mind, or even just made you curious, hit that like button so more people can learn about stories like this. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss the next big mystery that science helps us unlock. Do leave a comment and tell us, what part of your story would you love to learn more about? And if you're someone who never wants to miss a drop of discovery, hit that notification bell right now.